All right, <clears throat> Uncle Sam FM back here for, um, I guess this is episode five of my American Football 19 series, and we have gotten to the beginning of the 2019 season. Um, 2018 <clears throat> ended on a sour note, <clears throat> but you know, when, when you have a playoff system like ours, only one team gets to celebrate the end of the season, so... Um, but I thought we'd look back. I did a stream, actually, which you might be able to go to my Twitch feed and um, see the stream, see how things went. But um, we'll look back real quick at the um, at how it went. So the last video was this match, a 4-0 win over Chattanooga FC in the Southeast Conference semifinals. In the final, I went in with high hopes, and um, we were much more fit than Atlanta SC. I guess fixture congestion had kind of worked out for us in that regard. And Atlanta SC had, um, they had had to go to uh, overtime and penalties in their semifinal match, whereas I won easily and was able to sub some of my guys. So I was just in better shape going in. And that pretty much showed in the run of play. As you can tell, 29 shots to their three. Uh, I even put over half on target at 15. Um, but when you when you have 15 shots on target and only one clear cut chance, that probably means you're there's something wrong with that final touch um, to create the chance. Uh, so only one clear cut chance, two half chances. Did have a penalty in the 50th minute that Scott Wright, of course, missed. <clears throat> and so when it went to penalties, we were we were unable. I mean, we were peppering their goal um, all match long. But just couldn't find the winner. And, of course, penalties did not go well for us. Atlanta SC has a better team, better squad, top to bottom. And so they had more guys who were um, better takers. And it showed. Um, we got to, I think, the sixth penalty taker before losing 5-4. to four. So, um, yeah, that was the end of our 2018 season. Um, I did try to find other work. I looked for jobs in the NCAA. looked for a couple college jobs. The Stanford job came open. I applied. They went another direction. So um, I'm still with the force. Um, I do I think we would look around at um, some of the other leagues, how they ended up, um, MLS. So uh, the MLS Cup champion was Sporting Kansas City. <clears throat> they defeated Columbus in the final. Um, Columbus won the East by beating Atlanta United, which Atlanta United was far and away. Um, I didn't want to... Sh they dominated um, the league over the course of the year like the last year <clears throat> you can tell 13 points um they won the supporter shield by and that's a lot i mean i don't know how i mean that's a lot in mls um 13 points a lot of times <laughs> 13 points separates first from the middle of the table um in mls because it's it's such a balanced league but atlanta united ran away with it however they did lose to columbus who did finish second um in the final but columbus could not beat sporting kansas city who won the west and the West was pretty down. Um, we'll look at the table here. Yep. Yeah. Um, Sporting Kansas City <clears throat> uh, won the West by two. Um, and as you tell, seven points separated Sporting Kansas City in sixth place, uh, San Jose. So um, so that was MLS. Um, the uh, Lamar Hutt uh, U.S. Open Cup last year uh, went to, let me see. Go to the final. Went to Atlanta United. They did win the cup. Failed to do the double, but they did win the um, the U.S. Open Cup, and so they will qualify for the Champions League. Chelsea won the All Star Game. We watched that in my stream. Um, the championship, the USL Championship last year, was won by San Antonio. We'll go real quick. Um, as you can see here, FC Cincinnati ran away with the regular season in both the Eastern Conference and. Um, the Commissioner's Cup, which is like the supporter shield for the USL Championship. However, um, they were unable to um, win the playoffs. They got by Toronto FC in the first round. Well, let's just look at the tree. So uh, then they beat Louisville and beat Tampa Bay in the final on penalties. In the East, I'm sorry, the West. Let me just pull that up. Yeah, for some reason, it's fighting me here. Um, in the West, you had San Antonio come out of the West. Um, 
They beat St. Louis in the first round, Galaxy 2 in the semifinal, and then over Phoenix Rising in the final to get to the USL Cup where they beat Cincinnati in extra time 2-1. to one. So um, exciting finish for them. USL League 1, none of these leagues happen, so we'll just skip to college soccer. <clears throat> we won't look at all the conferences, but last year the champion, and as we could try see if we can look at the whole tree, um, so this is the f up to the quarterfinal. Um, Pittsburgh, Elon, who upset Stanford in the quarterfinal, which Stanford is one of the bigger programs in college soccer in, in America. Um, UCLA and Canisius surprised their way to um, the final four, which in uh, college soccer is called the College Cup. And in the first round, the semifinal of the College Cup, you saw Elon defeated UCLA. Pittsburgh beat Canisius to set up a championship between Pittsburgh and Elon, and Pittsburgh won the NCAA National Championship. Um, we'll skip on down. We'll just look at the USL League 2 playoffs from last year, uh, which, you know, let's just go right to the same of semifinal. <clears throat> Tucson lost to Thunder Bay Chill, Canadian team, and Toronto FC. Uh, defeated Western Mass Pioneers and to set up the final where Toronto FC and Thunder Bay after a scoreless match Toronto FC wins the championship before they moved up to the USL 1 um, the USL professional division and so that takes us now to um, our division the NPSL um, looking at last year we'll just go right to the um, oops I sort that right. <clears throat> the semifinal last season saw Kingston Stockade um, win on penalties over Atlantic City and would then lose on penalties to the Cosmos. So Cosmos would go to the MPS <clears throat> MPSL Championship semifinal uh, in the Northeast and the South, which is, is of course, is our um, region. The South semifinal saw Atlanta SC, who knocked me out, fall to Fort Worth 2-1 to one, and they played Miami FC in the final and Miami FC would beat Fort Worth 3-1 to one. so you had the Cosmos, you had Miami FC in the Midwest uh, we'll go to last season and I know this is boring I'll hurry uh, Ann Arbor and, and FC Buffalo won their semifinal matches and so Buffalo would beat uh, Ann Arbor to go to the MPSL Championship and finally, the West last season uh, would see PDX FC um, defeated Riverside Cross USA 2 0, and then El Farolito beat FC Arizona. And so that set up the final where PDX FC would win on penalties. Some of these teams you may recognize, probably most you don't, but just doing kind of a recap. Last year, um, the Cosmos defeated FC Buffalo in the first semifinal 3 0. Miami FC defeated PDX FC. To set up the championship, the NPSL championship between Miami FC and the Cosmos, which the Cosmos ran away with. Five to zero. Um, so that's a quick review of how um, the year went in American soccer in 2018. So let's kind of set up now our situation. Um, I We are through the preseason. We're going to live com the first opening match against the Georgia Revolution. But looking first at our squad, um, I wouldn't say I made wholesale improvements. I, I did pick up a few players who, um, I think like four or five, who are now in the starting lineup. Um, which I actually will look real quick at the transfer history. and You can look and see everything that I did. So... Um, I lost Bryant Martin, my goalkeeper. I lost Drake Christensen, a winger, and Anibal Mendoza, who was a center back that I could play at, at the pivot or at center mid. And those three guys were big, were important pieces. So I had to replace them. Um, I was not deep enough to just be able to trot in guys that I had from the second team last year. So I, I knew I needed to bring in some guys. Um, what I brought in, just a bunch of free transfers. Um, and one thing I looked for when I scouted these guys was determination. That was the big attribute that I, I, I needed to improve with this team. Um, some of them are, are <clears throat> skill-wise not great, like Shinsky um, doesn't bring much to the table, to be honest, uh, left winger. He probably will not be starting, but he does give me a little depth. 
He's got an 8 in determination. Um, most of his other attributes are not ideal, but hopefully we can develop him a little bit. Um, my scout thinks he can get a little better, so we'll see. Um, but some of the other guys are pretty good. We'll look at, this is my, f I have two, um, I always set up two lineups. Um, well, when I get to where I can actually have some depth. I have a first 11 and I have a second 11. And I'm, with this team, I'm there. Um, we might look at it after the game. But I did have to make a little adjustment with Elijah Martin. And I don't want to have to try to figure out what I did again. <laughs> so I'm not going to, but you can see I have first 11, second 11. This is the first 11 minus Elijah Martin. And it's, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, I, I, Escobedo was the goalkeeper that I found. Again, nothing special. Uh, he does have a little potential, and he's got a nine in determination. Um, my center backs, I brought in some center backs that are really good. This guy, Lloyd, um, he does have really good attributes for a player at this level. Um, and he's got that 11 in determination. Um, I'd like for his passing to be better, but mm, it's not, so I just have to kind of live with it. Um, uh, fullbacks, I, did, I needed another left back. Uh, and I have a few guys that can fill that spot. Uh, but this guy, Darius Chan, he's, you know, he's going to be one of the better players, one of the better left backs in the NPSL. Um, and he's got a seven determination. <laughs> These are not great, I know, but um, most of my guys were below five. So I needed, I, need, I needed to upgrade that attribute across the team. Um, and I guess I'm kind of hoping that they're going to be higher than most of the other uh, players in the league. Brent Cross was another big get. Um, his, his 14 tackling kind of makes him ideal as the pivot. And in the future, um, if I stay, if I stick around, I might try and retrain him as a center back. I doubt it, though, because he's 22. If he was younger, maybe I would. Um, but <clears throat> he's going to be a great player right in front of my back line to kind of protect my back line. Um, 13 work rate, you know, 11 strength. These are, you know, good attributes for... Um, a pivot player in, in this at this level Swaff would not be here <clears throat> he would not be starting um, Elijah Martin should be starting but he got a red card and so I think it was in the preseason so he's having to serve that suspension so Swaff is back in but again both of those are guys I had last year Sean McMath is new um, his passing is um, really kind of why I put him there <clears throat> Ideally, he'd be a better dribbler, and I may have to change his role because he can't dribble really at all. Um, in an ideal world, he's playing that second pivot spot. Um, but you know, Swaff is not much of a dribbler either, so it's kind of, I'm kind of I'm kind of stuck there. Um, Martin is a little better, so maybe he takes the ten when he comes in. But you know, right now I got McMath there. Scott Wright is back. Uh, he was my leading goal scorer from last year. Um, you know, not a great player. I'm not going to pretend like he's anything special, but, you know, he was productive last year. And then I brought in this winger, Reese Jackson. Um, left wing, um, nine determination, so, you know, pretty good. Obviously, some of his other attributes leave something to be desired, but 12 is a pretty good pace for this level. 14 acceleration, so... <clears throat> and he's shown that in the preseason. Um, yeah, I got a couple goals already, and none of these guys could come could join the team until April. So I, they did not get to play the first handful of friendlies that I had, because um, I guess April first is the the um, when the window opens for the NPSL, and uh, I needed a striker, and I got this guy Wilf, um, eight finishing, so that's an upgrade. A twelve first touch, uh, that and his determination was really what kind of. Um, sort of like drew me into him um those are you know good attributes uh i mean i'm hoping to that's going to be what he hangs his hat on is his first touch and you know his um his determination 11 work rate's good um and you know his pace is good 13 pace 15 acceleration so um <clears throat> so physically um i think he'll bring quite a bit to the table um uh, you know, we'll see. Again, he didn't get here until um, till April first, and did, was not able to score in the preseason. So he's got, you know, well, he he obviously has some room to grow. So now our opponent, Georgia Revolution, they um, are not very good. 
um, from the front of the team to the back, but they still have Promise Isaac. Uh, in real life, Promise Isaac started 2019 with Austin Bold. He moved up to the second level of, of soccer in our country. So he is probably... He might be the best player in NPSL in my game. Um, he's the kind of guy where, he, even though everybody behind him just really sucks, he could win matches on his own. Yeah, um, he could make a play or two where he gets a goal, maybe two, and now and then the other team is, is you know trying to work back to get in it. And this is an away game for us, so so uh, I'm 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 not. I, I feel like we have a good chance, but. Uh, you know they're a good team, and so I'm not overly. Uh, I guess I understand the threat here. Um, so let's just throw it out here and see. Um, it does look like they're going to be coming at me. I'm tempted to um, go a little more cautious with my mentality, but I'm going to leave it as is. Uh, in the tunnel. Well, obviously, I'd rather have him available. All right. Wilf kicks off his first official touch for the Emerald Force. Field looks narrow to me. Does it look narrow to anybody else? Uh, Jackson just couldn't get there. Asking a little bit too much for his pace. Thought about talking about training a little while. I'm, I'm still playing with training in FM. Uh, yellow card for Harrison of the Force, their midfielder, uh, right center mid. So training in real life, I I do um, I guess what you call <clears throat> most most coaches call it periodization, where we try to use different periods to train different things. Um, <clears throat> which the reality is, my season is a lot shorter than most than pretty much everybody's. I have maybe two to three months um, season to get all my training in so I have to kind of I, I have to be really selective I, and I I have to cut and you know cut things out man for the free kick so I um, and, and I like recreating an FM what we do in real life but the reality is I'm not sure that the, that periodization the way I do it in real life oh crap yeah there it is ugh Isaac, what did I tell you guys? <laughs> He's good. Um, Nigerian actually played. He played for the Nigerian Olympic team in two thousand eight. Mm. Got me on the counter. Probably should have taken his pace into account whenever I whenever I sorted uh, build my built my tactic and. Campbell with the red card, what yellow card, right with a yellow card. This is not going well. Not a good way to start the season. So anyway, um, I know I know ever probably everybody starts with um really physical preseason stuff. Oh, did we get a penalty? Yeah, we got a penalty. Probably be right taking it. Yeah. Ah, right, you idiot. Well, you ended last season missing a penalty. Might as well start this year missing one. Uh, I need to look at my penalty takers. I just... I don't want to make a rash decision, but that's, that's two kicks that he's missed that I really needed him to make. It's not a good way to start the year. I need to get at least a point out of this. This is... Um, yeah, so training. So, yeah, everybody starts with, you know, heavy physical work during the uh, preseason at FM to try and get the players fit, which, of course, makes sense. Um, and, you know, I, I've seen different things with training from different people who know a lot more about FM than me. And Wallace gets booked. Wallace is coming off an injury, so I'm going to have to sub him out probably about 15 minutes into the second half now for us though for this team that i'm with there's this challenge because it's it's a semi-pro team and so you only get like 
two or three uh, days a week to train. Like most, like three or four days out of every week are blocked off. You can't train at all in those days. And I guess that's to um, kind of simulate the idea. See, we're not doing bad. Three on target. One clear cut chance. Well, that's probably Wright's penalty. He missed like an idiot. Um, probably to simulate uh, the idea that these are semi pro guys, right? A lot of them work jobs, most likely. You know, they they'll we'll get off the bus uh, after this match. We'll get back to Knoxville, and then they'll go bag groceries or something. Yeah. This will be a disappointing result. All right, let's see. I am being more expressive. Right, let's get try and get it into space. Let's see what happens. They do have wing backs. So maybe they'll leave me some space uh, wide in the back that I can exploit. <clears throat> I, I actually would like to have that on all the time, but my players don't have the passing that I need for that. Uh, I'd rather at least keep the ball than just be giving it away all the time. Okay, Chan the left back, cuts in, so. Oh. Uh, shot off the post. All right, well, I need to. I need to sub Wallace. All right. Let's bring in some guys. Just see what happens. Haynes is pretty good. Fresh legs there, because Wilf is is better than than Rast. But I need a goal, so let's get some fresh legs. And Jackson with a long shot. I wonder if he's got that turned on. Now he's got to shoot less often, but he's gonna pop it. Seen enough of right. I'm I'm making a bad decision because I'm pissed. But <clears throat> I'll say this about McCarthy. He's got like a 17 determination. So throw him in in situations like this, hoping that that whatever. Uh, let me do a shout. This is something I always forget to do. FM now has so many moving parts. Um, that I, I forget about all this, a lot of the different stuff like training half the time I have to remind myself about mentoring oh, Mr. Haynes come on let's put something together here and McCarthy oh. oh hopefully salvages me a point right there uh, McCarthy I t he's got that 17 in determination and I really can't say for sure that that was the difference there but you know what look at that great plays just on side right foot boom uh, now let's see they're kind of staying what they were doing um, it would be awesome to get it to just steal the win here. Get 
Get it out wide. There you go. Campbell cross. Okay, come on. Oh, that's going to be it. No. Okay. Well, hey, we got a point out of it. Um, dominated the second half. I mean, just entirely. I think they had, it was it was seven shots to five at halftime. So we got six. Um, still only the one clear-cut chance, so that's not good news. Um, Could have won it. Dagon Scott Wright missing a penalty. That's frustrating. Uh, well, I'll just move on so that I'll, I'll analyze that later on my own. Yeah, great effort. Great comeback. Yeah, let's get home so you guys can bag your groceries. <sighs> yeah. I promise Isaac. Yeah, he's 12 pace. He's not like dominant in any one particular area, but he's he's balanced. He's a lot more balanced than any other player. He's got he's got more strengths and fewer weaknesses than any other player in the NPSL. Most players at this level, they they might have one or two attributes that are kind of stand out, um, but he's a little more balanced um, all over. So, so real quick look at my training. I. Um, it's looking at May <clears throat> so obviously like a lot of these days are unavailable I can't train those days and even the days I can train I only get two slots so I have to be really economical um, you know what I try to do is like one day I'm going I'm attacking and then one day I'm I'm I work on or one session on one day I have attacking and defending so um, then maybe the next chance I get I have I'll do something physical and then do something technical. Um, then when I can, uh, tactics. So I'll do I'll I'll do a either attacking tactics or defensive tactics. Um, and then I'll work on on match tactics or match practice. And I do those those two because those work every everybody the same. I have to be really economical with um, with this semi pro training. And so I, I throw this out just to see if any of you guys have any better ideas. Um, if, if this looks like the kind of thing that you would do or I, ha I have to cut out set pieces. We don't do set pieces at all. Um, we also definitely don't do any extracurricular stuff. We're not going to go make pancakes for the homeless or whatever. So um, I just don't have time for that. Um, and there's something else. I think general training I usually leave out. I do general in the preseason, so general and physical with the days I get in the preseason but once the season gets going I lop all that out because uh, I've I, we've got we've got to maximize what I've got so but um, maybe one of you guys knows um, has more experience uh, has, has a kind of a system that works for you with semi-pro um, or amateur football so if you do hey uh, comments throw it in there um, but with that, this is Uncle Sam FM after a disappointing result that saw us salvage a point late, and hopefully we can get things turned around um, before our next match. So I will, um, looking at the schedule, uh, maybe, hmm, maybe we'll live comp this Atlanta SC game. That'll be a big game. And that'll be, yeah, one, two, three, f uh, six matches in, five matches in. It's kind of the halfway point. So yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. So I'll uh, we'll plan on that. Um, uh, follow me on Twitter, and I do stream occasionally. Um, you can find me Uncle Sam FM on Twitch. And so if you, um, I might actually stream in, in not long after this, um, after after I get this video. The upload process started so so hey uh yeah follow me um subscribe whatever um and i'm always open to suggestion uh do you see something i do that's stupid <laughs> something that i could be doing better uh the way i do my videos is there something i could do that'd be better so please um i'm even if it's just harsh and mean i am open to all feedback so thanks for watching see you next time